Hello everybody, Brian here from Water Control. This month I want to discuss a very hot topic in many states, and that would be the rising levels of chloride in our fresh water supplies. The word chloride is a general term used to describe various salts that are formed via the bond of two or more ions or small electrically charged atoms, one of them always being a chlorine ion. In water, we most commonly see chlorine bonded with sodium, calcium, potassium, or magnesium, forming sodium chloride, calcium chloride, potassium chloride, or magnesium chloride, respectively. Chloride levels in lakes, rivers, streams, and aquifers are on the rise. Removing chlorides requires membrane treatment, like reverse osmosis, or distillation or deionization, and these are all impossible in natural environments. The three primary sources for this chloride contamination are road salts, used for melting ice, agricultural fertilizers, and water softener salt, which is used for softener regeneration. So why should we care? Well, human beings and other land animals can withstand pretty high levels of chloride, and chloride is actually needed to keep our cells functioning properly. Plus, our kidneys do an excellent job of excreting the excess chloride, provided we drink enough water. High levels of sodium chloride have been associated with hypertension or high blood pressure, though it's actually believed that the sodium component is the problem and not the chloride. Where there are real problems, however, is with aquatic animals and plants, because they rely on the water around them to maintain an internal balance of chloride in their cells. And when that water is too high in chloride, which would generally be at a level of anything over 230 or 250 parts per million, it can affect their reproduction, kill their offspring, or kill them directly. Amphibians like frogs are particularly susceptible. Often, if these organisms are killed off, there's a domino effect. Less algae gets eaten by the animals, so the water quality and the oxygen within the water declines. This, in turn, kills the fish in the water. Now, road salt and fertilizer are not my areas of expertise, but I do know something about water treatment, and I know that there are several things that we can do to reduce our chloride footprint when it comes to water softening. Number one, most important, update your water softener to a system with a water meter, if you don't already have one. It will count the gallons of water treated and initiate regeneration only when needed. And make sure those systems are set up and programmed correctly too. Number two, consider a brine reclamation package. It's a simple system for recovering and recycling a portion of the salt water used in softener regeneration. It's especially helpful in commercial applications. It can literally reduce chloride discharges by 33% or more. That's potentially thousands of pounds of salt saved every year. And brine reclamation is possible in residential systems as well. And number three, Consider an alternate technology to a water softener. One option is a whole house reverse osmosis system. Instead of media, we use a membrane system to take out the hardness minerals, as well as all sorts of other nasty contaminants. Or if scale prevention in commercial piping and equipment is your only goal, you could also consider a template assisted crystallization or TAC system. This technology uses a special media to pull calcium out of solution and render it into a crystal form that washes down the drain and does not stick to plumbing surfaces. To explore different options for reducing your chloride discharge, please contact Water Control today.